bats may have a different relationship with their gut microbiota than other mammals have with theirs. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the bat in the phylosymbiosis hat edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM, and today we will be highlighting a paper that was published in ASM's M Systems Journal, which you can find at msystems.asm.org, or just look for the link down below. Now, this paper suggests that the evolutionary relationship uh, may not be the strongest uh, force in shaping the bat microbiome in the same way that evolution has shaped other microbiomes. Now, the idea that one can see the relatedness of species by looking at the relatedness of their microbiota is called phylosymbiosis. Uh, and that's illustrated in the figure shown here. This is from a, a separate journal article, one that was published in MBio, and we will also link down to this uh, down below. Here, the frequency of this part of particular bacterial lineages uh, are shown um, with the evolutionary relationship of different mammalian orders uh, of those host species. If we look at the primates in blue, so uh, if you look down on that phylogenetic tree between all of the different mammals, the blue are the primates. And you can see that there is a large region of similar gut bacteria on the, uh, the left-hand side there where the lineages are more commonly found within the primate orders than within all those other mammalian orders. And those lineages are found regardless of the lifestyle of their host. So also denoted here is whether those hosts are carnivores or herbivores or omnivores. And those lineages are present in the primates regardless of their dietary lifestyles. You can also see that of all the orders that are studied here, and those are noted on the top of the graph here, the chiroptera are missing and the chiroptera are the bats. So the researchers in today's study wanted to look at the bat microbiome. Why bats, you might ask? Well, bats are in a very interesting for a number of reasons. First, when the chiroptera are combined with the rodentia, they represent more than 50% of all the mammalian species on Earth. So they are incredibly diverse in terms of the numbers, just the sheer numbers of bat species that exist on this planet. They are also diverse in their lifestyle, their ecology, where they're found, the geography, and more. Plus, you are probably aware that a number of recent emerging infectious diseases have bats as one of their reservoirs. So naturally, scientists want to understand these animals better. On the next slide, we will see uh, that they uh, looked that in this study, they were focusing on Afrotropical bats, uh, and the samples were taken from locations which are indicated in this map on the left-hand side here. Bats were captured and then had either their distal colon, which represents their gut, um, or their oral uh, cavity, their mouth, or their skin was swabbed. And then the microbiota were assessed um, using 16S RNA gene sequencing. The scientists also noted the diet of this bat, the species, the age, the location, and other important characteristics to look for correlations after the microbiomes were assessed. Now, the gut communities showed the lowest richness and the least diversity of all of those different microbiomes that they looked at, followed by the oral communities and then the skin. This is uh, in part similar to previous mammalian studies, which have shown that the skin houses the richest, most diverse microbial communities. The graphs on the right-hand side here uh, show the percent relative abundance of the top uh, 11 bacterial families of the different microbiome locations. Uh, so the gut here is on the left-hand side, and then the oral microbiome, and then the skin. I cut off the top, and I'm sorry about that. So the left-hand phylogenetic tree within this graph, evolutionary relationship of the different bat host species which were tested. So looking just at the gut, which is that um, left-hand set of graphs, uh, the abundance is between the hosts vary in ways that don't necessarily reflect the host evolutionary relationship. And this is relatively unique among the mammals. So if the gut microbiome isn't related to the evolutionary relationship of the host species, the authors asked, what about lifestyle relationship? We'll see on the next slide that this better explains the community compositions. When comparing the dietary lifestyles, the authors saw more clear relationships between different bacterial lineages, which are indicated on the right here, and whether those lineages were present or absent in either insectivores, which represent carnivores, or frugivores, the fruit-eating vegetarians, as depicted on the left. 
So all the bats were dominated by the proteobacteria, regardless of their diet. Uh, though fruit bats had increased Clotridiaceae and Streptococcaceae, um, which is shown here. Now, some of those Streptococcaceae, um, especially those within the lactobacillales ah, order, uh, may be present uh, in, in part because those are on the fruit that the bats are eating. So whether those particular, uh, particular lactobacillus are temporary and just passing through the gut microbiome or permanent colonizing members is an area of future research for this group. So why is it interesting that the bat gut microbiome composition doesn't correlate with evolutionary relationship? The first, this makes bats relatively unique among the different mammalian orders that have been studied so far. Uh, for the most part, as species diverge, so do their microbial compositions, but those can be traced back to the ancestral composition. Of course, factors such as um, location and distance can really play a role in that divergence. And since bats are a flying order of mammals, they can travel quite far. And perhaps that those large distances between different species may play a role in influencing the composition. Second, the relationship of the gut microbes to the host diet suggests that ecological factors may play a bigger role on microbiome composition in this mammalian order than the evolutionary relationship between host members. Relative to the non-flying mammal, bats have much smaller gastrointestinal tracts, they have uh, reduced intestinal tissue, and smaller digestive loads. And all of these characteristics are thought to have evolved to allow bats to uh, minimize their mass and be optimal for flight. And it's possible that these adaptations for flight have influenced microbiome composition as well. On the next slide, we'll see that this was picked up in a couple of different outlets. It was made into a press release by the Field Museum of Chicago, which is where the researchers uh, work. Uh, and here, the lead author, Holly Lutz, was highlighted saying that it, this research, shifts the paradigm that we've been operating under, that animals require microbes for digestion and nutrient acquisition. That's true for us, but it may not be true for all species. This was also picked up in the Times of India, where Lutz uh, was quoted as saying that bats may be very susceptible to environmental change. If they have transient microbiomes, they may not have the most stable defense mechanisms. Human-caused disturbances in the environment are a very important issue. Bats may be extra fragile and more at risk. And both of these are important implications to come out of the research today. Today, we've heard that bat ecology affects their gut microbiome composition more strongly than the evolutionary history of the host bat species. For more microbiome updates, be sure to subscribe to the ASM channel and ring the bell so you get a notification every time we add a new video. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minute.